what is your side hustle? What do you do? And like, uh, yeah. All that. Oh, okay, okay. So uh, I used to. Wow. Yeah, I must have a bigger reaction. Like, <laughs> try again. Wow. I'm still trying to. <laughs> 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 the process yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see yeah. the information uh, still yeah, stuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like the Ralph <laughs> in Neil So welcome back to Chills with TFC. I'm your host Reggie, aka your chief financial coconut, and today I'm joined with the crew. Right, uh, you may know some of them, you may not know some of them, but they all here for a particular reason, right? Because they all have like very serious corporate job and like slightly weird side hustles that, <laughs> that people uh, don't know of. You know, or maybe some people know lah, right? Like like your side hustles and all that. So that's why today we're here to talk about whether your side hustles actually help you with your career or like kind of affects or impedes your growth. Right, so yeah, anybody wants to start introducing yourself. Okay, okay, we, we must play a game first. Right? Mm -hmm. play, play a game. We can take it two, two, two ways. Either you introduce your side hustle and the other guys will guess your corporate or your, your corporate job or you can introduce your corporate job and let the other people guess your side hustle. I, I let you free choice, okay? You can decide which position you want to take. I'll introduce okay, go. my corporate job. Mm. So I'm in um, IT, so I'm a B2B marketeer. Mm -hmm. So Teresa is a B2B marketer in IT. Okay, then you? So my corporate job is actually, uh, I'm actually running a company right now. I don't think you need to say that. <laughs> uh, I'm running a personal finance platform. Right? <laughs> he runs Seedly, la, okay? Yeah. Like, if you don't know Seedly, then I don't know why you're here, right? It's a, it's a, I mean, we are a personal finance channel, so everybody should know Seedly and that's Ming Sen. Yeah, so uh, I run a fund. Yeah, that's my uh, well corporate job, so to speak. Mm. What's, what's so interesting about your fund? You can name drop one. I, okay, I'll let you oh. promote. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I'm with uh, South South Asset Management. So I run uh, a global currency fund. So uh, it's uh, essentially a hedge fund, long short. We do technical. Sorry, getting a bit technical here. Uh, <laughs> what's so special about it is uh, we are probably the only one in Singapore doing uh, this type of strategy. Mm. Uh, that's regulated. Yeah. Mm, no, I saw him with the blazer. I was asking yeah, him yeah, what, yeah. He, what I do for yeah, a Yeah, guy's too serious. He came in with a blazer. Yeah, I was exactly. like, Ralph, can you stop doing this? <laughs> right. Every but, time he come in on set, there's a blazer. You can you can unfold your shirt. More yeah. relaxed, more chill. Can this is the chill mode? Oh, this is a chill mode. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. So now that we have established the corporate basics, right? Each of you can you can choose like guess like what is your side hustle and all that. It's maybe, very broad. You have to give us a hint. Yeah, okay, like, maybe like, Ming Sun is the easiest, right? You cannot guess. He already knows, okay. right? Because <laughs> Everyone in the space will probably already know your side hustle. Are you sure? You like, have too many feature articles already. Correct, but I have too little followers on Instagram. I don't think... You must justified. give me a reason to follow your Instagram, right? You can see my side hustle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Yeah, so maybe Teresa, you can try. I don't know, Get, it's so guessing, broad, guessing like... side hustle. Like, you give some, give some like... Yeah, give me some Maybe we state the industry or... Mm. Yeah, yeah, mm. tell me the industry. So I'm a music lover. Music lover. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. okay, quite okay, broad, quite broad. Okay, broad. Okay, I give okay, you, I give okay. you. Yes, so yes. in the music industry? Sort of. You're a performer? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Music must be an instrument. We have an instrument. Wait, we you call tools. that an instrument? It's more like a tool, right? Yeah, 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 it's, a yeah, tool. yeah it's a tool. Oh, you need a microphone. Maybe you're a singer. Singer. Later we review, later we review. Okay, Makes anyway, sense. I'm going as like as far out as I can. Yes, okay. yes, I think you try. I think you try. Good. That, that, that's, a, that's a good basis. Okay, yeah. Ralph, maybe you guess Theresa's side hustle. Are we going to start with a hint? Yeah, yeah. What's a hint? What's a hint? Uh, yes. Okay, a hint. Wellness. Wellness is a bit broad. Think think further. Think further. I mean, it's wellness, yes. It but is it's, wellness. But it's, it's the outskirts of wellness. Can you, can you agree? I agree. It's the outskirts mm -hmm. of wellness. Outskirts, yes. Therapy. Yes, it's therapy. Therapy is mm -hmm. like Leo these days, you know? There are all sorts of therapy. Uh, try harder. <laughs> Hypnotherapy. <gasps> well, nice. you're definitely guessing 50% of what I yes, do there. Yes, it's in a ballpark. Wait, wait, yeah. what, what made you guess hypnotherapy? I have no clue. I just, yeah. Okay, no, okay, okay. We stop okay. it there. Later, everybody reviews their side hustle. Right? Okay, yeah. so Mings, maybe you can guess Ralph's side hustle. Any him? Yeah, say, uh, say. Arts. It's not even more broad, right? Arts. Yeah, yeah. Uh. music, wellness, art. Yeah, art. art. Any more him from it? More physical. On physical. Mm. Uh, guess, yeah. guess, guess. Physical art form. What do you usually wear for your side Ah. Oh, oh. Ah. Uh, that is a great question. That's a great question. But uh, you say then gonna already. No, because uh, in terms of the side hustle, I might be wearing like that too. Is that your costume? Oh, <laughs> wow, very close, very close. Uh, okay, uh, yes. I'm going to go a bit extreme here. You are pole dancer. Mm, on the side. Well, 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 very close. Well, very close, 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 very close, 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 close. Okay, okay, how we start with you? What is your side hustle? What do you do? And like, uh, yeah, all that. Oh, okay, okay. So uh, I used to dance ballet for couple of decades and uh, so I run a ballet school and also a, a dancewear fashion label. 
Wow. Yeah, must have a bigger reaction. Like, okay. try again. Wow. I'm still trying to. <laughs> 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 Make sure you <laughs> process yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you can see the information still yeah, stuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like in Neil Tats. <laughs> right? <laughs> it is. Uh, no, there's oh. a Street Science feature, right? Recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. my god. Yeah, 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 yeah. Impressive. Yeah, later we can talk about it. We can talk about it. Okay, yes, come, come, Teresa. Yep, so I'm a spiritual healer. Mm. Yeah. So when I say the hypnotherapy, is actually correct because I do sometimes deploy the hypnotherapy skills to take people to the outer states. Wow, outer states. Wow, namaste. <laughs> mm. Okay, okay, great. Later we can talk about it. Thanks. Okay, I'm a DJ at a club. Ah, mm. Definitely very far like from a, your very straight list. Uh, this one is right a now. fake one. This one fake? fake one. Like the it's like, oh, this yeah, is correct. a fake persona. It's Pretend, for work only. Yeah. Were you a zookout? Uh, I wasn't. But three years ago, I was doing a festival called Legacy Festival. Oh, I was at Legacy. Oh, really? For sure. Every music fest, I'm there. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay, so you're at Legacy. So I was opening the stage for day two. Oh, I usually miss the opening. Okay, no wonder. <laughs> mm. Good choice if I think you her. too long, I work too hard. Work, work hard too yeah, 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 yeah. You thought <laughs> Kobe, you couldn't perform. Yeah, no, and yeah. you too, you too busy with your corporate job, mm. right? And it, it's it makes it I knew like buy advertisement and target mm. her yeah, to yeah. follow my Instagram account. <laughs> <laughs> wow, speaking from silly, speaking from silly. Okay, okay, okay. So so now everybody has kind of established like your your work and like your side hustles, and and I hope it blows people's minds. Um, yeah, why is it your side hustle and not your main hustle? I guess for my case, I think it's really out there, right? It is. I feel yeah. it. There's a hard feeling today. Yeah. Exactly, right? Okay, yes, it's yes, totally yes, 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 yes. out there. So, yes, yes. so, you know, as people are getting more familiar with this type of treatment, with this type of uh, therapy to help them with their wellness, it takes time to build. Right. Mm. But also for the longest time, like in the Singapore environment, we have been trained to, you know, go with the mm. normal route mm. of academy and then get a career or maybe build a business that people can touch and feel and understand mm. rather mm. than, you know, talking to spirits, t- talking to your ancestors, <laughs> talking to your wait, ego wait. and guardian angels. Pe- wait, people oh. talk to spirits and, and guardian angels and ancestors when they work with you? Yeah. Wow, wow. T- t- tell us, how does that work? Uh, so I train a team of channelers, right? Okay, so the okay. team of channelers will lend their voice and lend their bodies to the uh, souls, to your guardian angels, to your ancestors, to your past life, so that they come forward to uh, share some insights that people are not familiar with or not aware of. When you tell people this, <laughs> what is their reaction? <laughs> so there are some people like, you know, like yeah. the people in this room, where right? they will be <laughs> like, Mm-hmm. Let's mm. just keep a straight face, right? Uh, no, I'm actually thinking of how to engage her service. Your ancestor, is it? Yeah, right, like, right, like, I really like want to talk is that right? <laughs> Yeah, so I have done like even interesting cases where people don't really have to die for us to engage, right? So there were cases when COVID where people were in ICU and they're really curled up in fetus position, but they are they still have a heartbeat and they're still breathing. And the family just really want to know because they can't go into the ICU during COVID time to talk to the mother or the or the grandparents, right? And they really want to do something for their last wishes, right? And the soul want to express their last wishes. So we do go in and channel uh, for the soul to say what is their last wishes before they move on. That's a really practical use of mm-hmm. your side hustle. Eh? I mean, it's practical. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're in Singapore, but yes, yes. Yeah, because please, most yeah. people who have associated... Can monetize, your, right? Can monetize your, this your, one. <laughs> no, and, I mean, like, it is something that immediately has a use case for, mm, right? Mm, because mm. I I believe you know, sometimes it's a bit hard to explain to people what you actually do. But yeah. that that example is always like, why well, immediately there's a need. Yeah. That was, yeah, yeah. Is it yeah. a growing need? Well, not many people. I mean, I haven't really advertised about these okay. type of services, okay. right? But as I continue to work with the channelers, there are more and more things that came up mm. that taking us to routes that we thought was unknown, mm. but then we're like, okay, we still can solve the case. Okay. Like okay. people who hear voices, people who are thinking of jumping off a building, we are able to find out like what, where exactly the voices came from oh my goodness. and then actually address those voices. Okay, okay, great. Yeah, Ming, why you give up on your cool job? 
I didn't People really these days think DJ is cool, right? I still think so. Martin Garrix, I'm in Vancouver. Yeah, those, those producers, I mean, if you made it, it's really cool. But I think the infrastructure here is highly competitive. Mm. We have that little amount of gigs and, and quite a good amount of people trying to go for that few positions. I did try. I did try to pursue this full-time. But I think the income and the growth of income is not very sustainable. How much does an average DJ make? Oh, is that insult that I call you average DJ? <laughs> Average DJ. Ooh. No, no, like at, at that point in time when you're starting out, you're dabbling, 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 yeah. dabbling, dabbling DJ. Oh my god, I, I think need when, to cancel I, for this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you definitely need to have some form of training at a certain level before you start residency at the club. And of course, back then I think this was years ago. Uh, I was receiving about three k per month. Kind okay, of income. Okay. Yeah. So you were be a big brand was behind you. You Sorry. were a resident at a at a big at brand. some of our places. Ah. Correct. Um, but later part I realized that you actually need to do a bit more than just like DJing. what what a bit more like you like need to be action. a music director for so, adult <laughs> action <laughs> like what management oh, 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 oh. adult action with management hey sorry that's actually one way to, okay, to okay, progress okay, by okay, the way okay, progress. Okay, but when you need a manager to you know, promote so you, you need to move into management role like you become a music director oh. you'll be a booking agent for the club Mm. So all these are the progressions, not just the... the not just the, the skill. So after a while, the DJing is a BAU, whereas the progression depends on what kind of contribution you bring to the club. Uh, mm. Then how to become like a big famous DJ like that if you're always doing booking and not on music? This is for Singapore context. So for mm. overseas, it's a bit different. Their infrastructure is bigger. They have more people to support each other. Mm. So they will produce and then they, it's all about connection, right? And then for example, hardware like your tracks and then he start collaborating with you. Mm. That's how they bringing yep. new faces into the scene. But if you notice, it's actually it's quite concentrated on certain parts of the world right mm, now. Mm, as of now. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Fair, fair. So no interesting income growth. So that's why it's no longer... More it's not of your your progression slow. will be slightly slower. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. So you know, like, Sili do very well. Huh? Okay. <laughs> Sis, come, <laughs> Ralph. Uh, so for myself, I've been dancing ballet for a couple of decades. And uh, when I was... Dancing ballet was with this school called uh, Dance Point. So it's basically the largest... Uh, ballet school in Singapore. So that's run by my teacher. So I thought that, well, it would be kind of cool to be able to do, maybe if I would be a quarter successful my teacher, that's not so bad. So mm. and then I had this uh, opportunity. Uh, so yeah, to start a ballet school, I thought, well, just give it a try. So that's uh, how that uh, started. So and you never thought of going pro as a dancer? Oh, well, my teachers definitely did encourage me to do so. Uh, but uh, I was a bit more practical uh, in the sense <laughs> of uh, the kind of career path that I wanted to take. Yeah, mm. I, I chose how, how pragmatism. Not, how not practical oh. is, is done. It's like oh. dance as a career. No, no, no. It is not impractical. Oh, well, not I impractical. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, it's not. It's just, I guess, from uh, my perspective, because both my parents are dancers also. Yeah, so uh, I, I know Kampo that. Kampong or dancers? Uh, yeah, I guess. Mm. Uh, I mean, only my parents. My also parents belly. <laughs> More uh, European national dance, like folk dance. Yeah, so, so I think that I also know, for example, like let's say if you are very passionate about like, for example, in terms of dance and you'll be like a professional. So okay, there's two parts to it. One is like being a professional dancer and uh, joining like a dance company. And then there's also one where you start like a, of course, a commercial school. Obviously, a commercial school would uh, earn you like more. Uh, but if you're like a professional dancer, it's a little bit hard if that's all you do. Of course, if you have, let's say, side hustles, then of course, who knows, depending on side hustle, right? Mm. But uh, if you just do that, uh, yeah, it's very difficult. There is definitely a ceiling. And the ceiling is, uh, yeah, not very high. Lah. And my parents uh, told me that, like, since young, like, they, of course, would like me to be professional, but uh, if the, the likelihood of that is low, right, then don't bother, like, you know, like, uh, 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 <laughs> really uh, uh, just, uh. just do something practical. I was just wondering, like, I think back then there was, like, Step Up the movie, and you know, a lot of people start step learning hip-hop. Up, yes. yeah. What makes you wake up one day and want to do, like, ballet, which is like a... Oh, no, no, no. So my parents just got me uh, exposed to different like hobbies, including in this case, uh, ballet. I think it's just because they were uh, open to this, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. to this idea. So, uh, and well, as so-called fate would have it, I quit everything else uh, except for ballet. And well, since that was the only thing going for me, apart mm -hmm. from studies, so mm -hmm. I just continued. <laughs> I think that's ah, how I can okay, okay. think about But you've it. definitely overcome a lot of stereotypes for men to be in dance and in uh, real tarts, right? Yes. So, uh, but I would say there will be more from... Uh, primary school and before that yeah so like in primary school they say oh like what do you do in the weekends you know they say oh i go for ballet classes i mean clearly you, you can imagine like primary school kids i mean i, I don't blame that of us now I don't, I don't like obviously they'll find it funny like oh my god you are like you are like yeah so i try to avoid saying well yeah of course i'll get affected i mean i'm still a primary school kid after all of course i'll go back and i'll tell my mom oh you know what uh, they call me names uh, and my parents like well 
you just do your best and then just that you're kind of like results show yourself that you're, you're good. It's cool. It's a cool thing. But one good thing is I think I went to this secondary school that emphasized a lot about uh, Chinese dance also. So after that, the perception changed. So a lot of people were like, wow, this guy from Chinese dance. Wow, solid, solid. So, and then, uh, yeah, uh, that will be more of the uh, perception. Then we get to also perform. People will know that, okay, like, dance like male dancers are well they are strong they can like uh, leave the ladies well they're really strong i can't do that for example let's say uh, so then, how, how many schools do you have today two so we opened uh, a second one in haogang last year nice yeah, yeah. nice so, congrats. Congrats. Wow, congrats congratulations yes. it doesn't sound like a side hustle <laughs> it sounds like a serious one yeah, yeah. 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 so uh, i'm i'm quite lucky that uh, my partners they are uh, they're full-time teaching yeah so uh, and, and also like running the show uh, of course at the start uh, the setup, for example, like setting up of the, the systems. Yeah, so that would be at the start. Yeah, so that would be more the dance studio one. And then the for the dance we have fashion one, that's, uh, it's more of a kind of rebranding of my friend's previous fashion label. So I just roped in a few more friends in and we started it and there it is. Fair, that's cool. Interesting, interesting. Okay. Everybody has very interesting side hustles. Um, so what's your side hustle? No, I don't have a side hustle. I got no time for you side hustle. Yeah, I, do, I do like four or five out. recordings. You're, <laughs> you're, like, you're like my fourth recording for the day, right? Other side hustle, <laughs> right? Yeah, so, so this is my only hustle, okay? So you must like, share, subscribe. <laughs> so, yeah. Maybe maybe talk about the bad things first. Has your, has your side hustle affect your main career? In a sense of like impede your career? Not no. so much impeding, but I have to declare because I'm in a regulated environment. So like uh, if I have any, let's say, any other company ownership, even if it's just uh, an investment, uh, uh, uh. I need to declare. It, it's a regulatory requirement. Mm -hmm. So I'm very compliant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. it, it's, uh, it's super important in this mm -hmm. space. I know, yes. Yeah, IRAs don't disturb. Yes. Uh, the, mm. who's, who's, uh, MS, MS. MS, MS <laughs> also don't disturb. We comply, we comply. comply, yes, comply. Yes. Never market any old how. Yeah. So I do have another side hustle. Oh. Which is uh, two restaurants ah. that I have to declare. Okay, okay. But okay. I didn't declare this uh, spiritual healing. Wait, so if your friends see this, <laughs> if your colleagues see this, this is the first time they, they, oh. they know that, oh my God, you do the whole like juju thing. Like, <laughs> mm, is, it, is it? Yeah, not many of them know. Yeah. Serious? Yeah, so it's. Uh, and why? Okay, why? Well, because we're in IT, we're <laughs> completely <laughs> practical. You go away, you touch the server, it's like, mm. That's right, so right? right. Like, like somebody double touched yes, something's this. wrong. That's yes. right. The flow is blocked, <laughs> right? Yeah. It is the feng shui of this room. It, it wouldn't flow. <laughs> but is there a reason why you, I mean, like, based on that, right? Like, your side hustle did not affect your main hustle because you didn't they're Tell completely separate. About it. Right? Yeah, and, and you so don't, separate. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't yeah. sip into your life. But is there a reason why you don't let it sip in that sense? I, I think it's very hard to sip, uh, <laughs> right? Uh. Because like every day, what I do at work is about lead generation. Mm. Is about whether this MQL right is good enough for me to pass on to the sales, right? Mm. So it is about curating my leads. I don't know how to bring the spiritual aspect. It's to too that. far off That's the it. spectrum. <laughs> yeah. So there's no human touch in your work in that sense. It's all very it's uh, all, practical, okay, true. All funnel, yeah, it's all the, then, exactly. Okay, it's all the down, the blah, numbers blah, blah, blah. Okay, and all okay, that. Uh, yeah. So there's no human. Mm -mm. Uh, yeah, if not, there isn't. I, yeah, okay. But if I'm in HR, then there's a complete story, right? Yeah, oh. because say that, that whole ability to feel the yeah, space and the energy. Exactly, of the I can see is... this person walking in. You know, yeah, yeah, like yeah. okay, the vibe is not so good today, right? Then why don't you change into HR? I wasn't yeah. trained in uh, mm. in HR. I was trained mm. as a marketer. Actually, okay. to be honest, I was actually trained as a psychologist, psychiatrist, mm. and uh, I also did engineering and I also did uh, media. Wait, whoa, whoa, <laughs> wait, wait. How how does it how does it work, right? Media, engineering, psychiatrist, run two restaurant, you know, do IT sales. Yeah, life uh, is too IT short. Let's try everything. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, I did study in Singapore Poly as an mm. electrical engineer. I went in there because my dad had a company that mm. who was making rewrite heads for a uh, hard disk. So the idea was that I was going to continue the business or something, mm. but it was just really too dry. That wasn't something that I was like keen on looking at the operation line, you know, and he was running three shifts those days when it's really, really hot, right? And so then when I made a request to go to study in university, I went to study uh, media studies with a side on uh, psychology. Mm. Yeah, so I was uh, studying TV, radio, PR, news, and, and then I had the psychology bit behind that. 
And after psychology, how does it even move into to the IT something marketeer? Not so no, IT marketer is fine. Yeah, like, yeah. More like the the field. Yeah, field. How do you end up is, in the? Is there like a new level of yeah, awakening? Studying. Like a new level of awakening? Yeah. So I think it's just life takes you whatever, right? Just go with the flow, right? Mm-hmm. And that's just what happened. So what got you started to? To this one spiritual one way. Yeah, like, like, yeah, yeah. You, you don't like, wake up one day and say, okay, I'm going to start. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, actually, I. I have suppressed it for a long time, right? So... Wait, I've, suppressed in the sense that you've already felt something different? It's different like, from the like others. How, okay, so, okay. like, for example, when I could see things, right? Wait, so, yeah, the third mm, eye. Is that, is, that, is that how it is? Yeah, they call it the, the third eye. Is it the third right? eye? Yeah. Okay. So, of course, a lot of things were suppressed because you're trying to be practical. You're trying to be the same as everybody, right? It's mm. like, if you see things other people don't see, you better like, okay, whatever I saw is just a figment of imagination. Because when these energy comes, for me, I'm not like some people who will see a solid figure. I'm mm. not like that. For me, I'll just see fleeting energy or patterns of energies and stuff like that. But there was once when I was staying in my friend's house in Australia. So it just so happened that his family decides to build a house opposite a graveyard, right? So that time, his younger brother and sisters were not allowed to cycle on the road, but they're allowed to cycle inside the graveyard because it's safer, right? No uh-huh. traffic, right? <laughs> so <laughs> Nothing There moving. might be traffic, but they just Nothing can't see moving. the traffic. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Exactly. So anyway, while I was babysitting, <laughs> the brothers and sisters they were looking at the gravestones, reading the tombstones and all that. So anyway, that night, because I was staying over at the place, uh, the place is up in the mountain, in the middle of the night, somebody came to my ears and went, boo, ghost, right? And I opened up my eyes and there was this figure and was this woman. I could make out the energy um, shadows of her. And then there was a lot of uh, little uh, imps sitting on my duvet and they were oh all shaking gosh. it, right? And I could see the clock. It was at 3.06 a.m. And Wait, then, is 3.06 an important time? Well, the f- I just took note of it because I wanted to know how long the interaction was. Oh, okay. So anyway, she said, hey, I need your help. And I'm like, hey, you know what? I'm just here for my holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Please let me it's go. It's my pay you know. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not paying enough to deal with this, man. It's fine. Let me relax. Go do and your then thing. she was like, can you help me? I was like, seriously, I'm just here for my holiday. And that's when I remembered that we all have our guardian angels and then they can come in to help. So that's when I go, guardian angel, if you're here, please invite them to leave. And so that's when I could feel this presence. And then this guardian angel came and then they all left the room and then suddenly the room was bright and I could see the clock again and it was three on nine. So I then basically ignore that. I didn't really see myself as somebody mm. different or I just think of it as just one off. So you didn't help? No, no, I didn't help them. Uh, oh, yeah. and I, I, do, I do regret. I, I have a bit of regret right now. So Mings, has it, has it impeded your career? I think at the start, definitely, I'm a bit more afraid to tell people that, right, that, that I'm doing this, this. Why? Because it's in the nightlife. And you know the stereotype that comes with nightlife is that uh, you are drinking all weekend, you are smoking all weekend and, and spending a lot of time. So is it true? It's not true. Probably okay. do some drugs as well. Yeah, so that's a, that's a common stereotype. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I think at the start... Once and for all, it's not true. It's not true. Okay, okay. Yeah. okay. Can DJs be very healthy. are actually music lovers. Okay, we okay. do drink. That's mm. simply because we like drinking, even without... Mm. That, that's how I hustle. Yeah, but I think over time, it's very difficult to not show it, right? You start sharing on your social media and all, and then people start to know. And then I soon realized that actually it's something that sets you a little bit different from others. Lah. So at least you can have events that they can show up for, or like they can talk to you about music or even festivals. Yeah, they will, they will, they will ask you whether they can go for this festival. Uh, they should be going for these artists and all. But of course, I think personally, professionally, we news make sure that that we don't but okay but this is this is this can be a figment of your imagination right in the sense that okay although we know like socially that some of these kind of connotation mm. uh, sometimes it plays out in our head right like, like it's yeah, like yeah. hey you know like don't lie, don't lie, like, don't say don't you know like try to and I think a lot of people tuning in they may have like some other side hustles that, that kind of go along in yeah. this realm, right? And then they they also want to hide because I've talked to Candice, you know, another DJ. She also said, last time I went in Big Four, I don't review, yeah. right? And uh, because people think like, as a management consultant, the next morning when I wake up, it's like, eh, last night you had a party. Okay. <laughs> but I Correct. pay you very, very a lot, you know? Like, are you sure you're working all in, right? So there's a lot of these things. It, but question is, is this a, a overplaying, right? Is this a figment of our imagination or have you on some level felt 
a little no, bit. No, it's of... definitely true. It's okay, definitely true. Okay. But I think I'm just okay. At least when I'm more in the corporate sector, that that is definitely a very big thing. That mm. if you have any side so you declare, and then they will probably tell you not to carry on with that. So you've had someone tell you that before. So back when I was in corporate, I didn't even dare to declare this. Because of the HR stance on, on this, that you shouldn't have like side hustle and stuff. Moonlighting. But, mm, no moonlighting. That's why all the DJ all wear shades, right? <laughs> so when you're spinning, your, now, right? your HR no, no, come no. in, right? Then he's like, mm, mm, then it's like, <laughs> you pretend, you pretend. It's like, hey, who, who, just don't mm, mm, look at them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm drunk, I'm drunk. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. There's some other right? accent that yeah. come out. <laughs> but I do think that that stereotype comes only because you're in a club. But if you're just a DJ, people don't put that stereotype on you. Mm. Yeah, it's but only the club. I think the space here is it's more like when you say it's a DJ, they immediately have this vision of mm. really. Yeah, for example, like when you say he, he does belly, I immediately imagine him he made your touch. Doing it. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't know, it's maybe because I go that, to that a lot of music fests, I have a yeah. lot of respect for DJs. Yeah, so that's these are all real mu- music lovers, right? Yeah. Who, who, mm-hmm. yeah, but I think the general public, not everybody goes for festival or stuff like that. Hey, welcome to the Financial Coconut Podcast Network. I'm your host, Reggie, aka Yorchi Financial Coconut. And if you are loving what we are creating here, like, share, subscribe, share with your loved ones, comment in the comment section below. And yeah, we'll see you for great content on Chill Swift TFC. Okay, but then has your side hustle then helped you pursue your career? Like, help you in, in your career in any ways? I would say uh, yes when uh, if the occasion arises that I have to uh, talk about it. So I, I don't always talk about it in like every of us, every meeting when we talk about let's say uh, a hedge fund and say oh by the way I uh, dance. do you dance <laughs> uh, do you also dance belly? Uh, it, it, no. It's not uh, no, it's, <laughs> yeah it's a bit hard. But uh, uh, uh. if for example the a rare occasion that arises then uh, they'll find it interesting and it's just like a more of a kind of a co- conversation mm. that, that, that uh, is interesting for them uh, rather than just mm. all about like talk shop and all that. Yeah, yeah. But but how about if, not say directly impacting your career but maybe your side hustles have helped you through hard times. You know, in times when your career was like so hard and then you're like so dry, so jaded from this thing and your side hustles kind of like give you a different spin to life and like have a place to escape to or something. You know, is there something like that? It's definitely something that you can, you know, unleash the yeah, whole yeah, entire yeah. weeks. Yeah, yeah. Work well, of stress. You, uh, you just know that person. Then you just, you, you, just, <laughs> you know, drain your energy and then like it's, and of oh. course you feel happy. Yeah. It's a different type of experience, right? If you mm. see the, the crowd dancing to your music. So that's definitely a little bit of a, two to three hours escape for me, in a mm, sense. Mm, mm. Yeah. I push you a little bit on that, right? Like, has, has there been a particular occasion where you felt like you want to give up on your corporate job and then like your side hustle becomes like a viable alternative or maybe you quiet quit and then you just like side hustle like it was your focus for a while, right? And then and then you come back to the corporate. You know, was that a scenario like that? No, I think it's very difficult to do that, right? And you will have that thinking if you don't like what you're doing every day. La. So for mm. me, I think maybe it's a bit different. Mm. Yeah. Why you not? Hey, don't politically correct. Correct, right? We love working. <laughs> <laughs> we are all workaholics. Uh, yeah. but, but I agree with him that uh, mm. I definitely like what I'm doing. Mm, mm, yeah. So mm. I, I don't think I would quit uh, to to do like uh, focusing on a side hustle. But I also like the the side hustles that I do, for example. Mm, mm. So so yeah. So I see it like continuing. So, so does it help you then, like in that sense of like, okay, you 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 have your main hustle, which is a lot of thinking work already, and then your side hustles also require because technically you don't dance, right? Technically you run a dance school and a, uh, it's like running business, right? Two two other side businesses. Yes. So for example, for the ballet school now, it's uh, most of the time it's now already more my partners uh, running the mm-hmm, show. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but of course, as and when, uh, if they need extra pair of hands and extra like uh, thinking extra cap, teacher. Yeah. Uh, no, unfortunately, <laughs> or fortunately, depends on how you see it. Uh, uh, not, I would say in terms of more the side hustle would be more the uh, the dance wear, uh, fashion mm. people sort of things. So from the uh, like some of the uh, logistics, inbounding, uh, to putting mm. in the warehouse, processing orders, setting up the site. Uh, you don't feel tired, lah. No, no, because uh, my background is actually in uh, tech, so some of these things are doesn't take too much of a time, mm. uh, So uh, it, yeah, it's uh, easy to set it up. So no, then, but you, you you don't feel like do you guys feel like sometimes it's tiring in the sense that like there's just so many things ongoing in your life. You know, like a lot of people like on the weekend they'll be like, I just want to chill. 
Uh, if you're doing you know, what you're like, passionate about, mm, it actually energizes you. It gives you a lot more. Yeah, a lot, a lot reason more to reason to. It. Yeah, exactly. It's, mm. I mean, like for me, like knowing the number of people I help, the number of things that I could solve for others because nobody else could solve, just really perk me up. Really, mm. just make me feel that okay, I'm at least doing something good for others. So you 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 feel like on the weekends or during your off time, off your main work time, doing something that like energizes you actually is is better than like just like scrolling youtube or something is that the mind is scrolling yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. or just consuming Mm, mm. because i feel that when we're actually producing it actually energizes i mean for us right it's all about productivity and when you have something that you're passionate about and you're producing it energizes you rather than just you know be a glutton and just consume so is there any issue with consume versus productivity? I think when we actually overconsume and don't apply, okay. that becomes like a state of like, you know, okay. we just fatten ourselves up. But so what? How do you apply it? Mm. Like we make a difference when we actually apply ourselves. Mm. When we produce something and make a difference and impact on the environment, on the people, on our family, on our friends. And that's why mothers cook. Mm-hmm. Right, because mm-hmm. they want to produce something no, to feed like, the family. Because fathers can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Fair. Fair. I, I. I like that. I like that. By extension, right? When a lot of people think about like starting their side hustles or building a side hustle, a lot of people have like, oh, we're gonna make money. You know, it's like like make money is like the main goal, right? Like, and and any any thoughts on that? Is is your is it okay to do a side hustle that is not really very like profitable? If like, I could comment, I think all of us went into our side hustles in a very gradual way. Because it was part of us and then it became part of us. Mm. So it wasn't something where we had to go force ourselves to do something. Mm. Right? It's just because for the love of whatever we do. Yeah. So you don't need to like pay a program and learn some three secrets to start a side hustle. (laughs) No, I don't think we go around looking at (laughs) most money making side hustle and then we start choosing one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's more like catered to what you're really interested in and what Mm. you're willing to spend time on. Mm. And then it's just over time because of this little habit that you have. And then mm. you feel like, eh, hey, actually, I'm, I'm quite good enough to, you know, maybe go for an audition or to start producing mm. in, mm. in a mm. sense. Mm. Mm. Or like for me, yeah. it was helping people. Mm. It was just a very natural progress. So monetization becomes a gradual thing. Like it's not like a, it's not like a thing like upfront, okay, we're going to like make money out of this. It was more like as you do it, the market look for you in some level. Right, like like people started rendering your services. They want they want you to do more than just a hobbyist. Is that something like that? Maybe for him it's different because he's definitely making a lot of money. I think. Yeah, I confirm. Like, <laughs> you see the whole, the whole thing. Yeah, but I think yeah. at least for me, uh, I think money is more like a bonus. Being able to perform that is the the I know main. It's a performance high. Yeah. There's yeah, a performance high to correct, it, yes. Correct. I would tend to agree. I don't base this just on money, right? Because like for me, the passion is helping people to make a difference, especially in the area that I'm working on is that not many other people could help and support. Mm, and just mm. being able to step in to make a difference, that brings so much more joy. And that's the same for my team, right? Because I train the channelers. Firstly, they have to have this gift. And how do they use this gift? You don't want to have a gift and keep it. And then just think about like, I will keep it. I only use it because I get paid for it. It's not a gift if you can't share it. So I seldom have them going, like, oh, we must earn this amount of money or stuff like that. It's never the case. I mean, we have a prize. And then people come say that, look, I really need your help, but I don't have this amount of money. And we're like, sure, we can help. Yeah, so nice. it's which is why I guess it's a side hustle. Yeah, yeah it's right? not the main hustle. We <laughs> just cannot pay the bills. Exactly, it, it, it's uh. not there for me to say, "Oh my god, I have to use this to commercialize mm. it so much mm. to you know pay my mortgage and stuff like that." Okay, okay. So then, how would you encourage someone? Okay, let's say like these days is very trendy to have a side hustle. You can can we agree on that? It's quite trendy to have a side hustle. I think a lot is not by choice that they just need a little bit more income to cope with the increasing cost of living. So that is a second hustle, not a side hustle. Yeah, it becomes... I think the everyone's talking about side hustle these days is simply because they need to deal with that increase in cost of living. I mean, if you along the way manage to find something that you're passionate about, that's great. But I think a lot of times it's more like people taking out certain job to really just... Supplement. Uh, yeah, supplement the income they have. Mm-hmm. Which is not wrong. But I personally feel that you need to have passion in your side hustle, right? To make sure there's longevity to the whole entire mm. uh, hustle. I would completely yeah. agree with that. Because like for my restaurants, for example, during the times when it's so tough with the COVID, mm. like it's so easy to just want to quit, right? But we mm. didn't. And we just kept going because there's a love and passion for the coffee and the roasting of the coffee. Where, what's, your, where, what's your restaurant? 
<laughs> so there is a Long Black Cafe, which is at the Biopolis area. And then there's a Bodacious Bar and Bistro, also at the Biopolis area. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay, I may have walked past before. Do we get... Promo we get code, promo code. Right? Mm, I'll make that <laughs> arrangement. <laughs> yeah, yeah, promo code draw in the link below. Okay, okay, fair, fair. Okay, let's say we put monetization aside, right? If, if you have to run a side hustle for the reality of finances, how about if someone wants to like, you know, like build a life, right? Like you feel like your corporate job is like, it's a grind, it's a day-to-day, you know, and, and, and that is not a discount to the value of it, of what it brings to your life. Right? Because it gives you that money to be able to even fathom such thoughts, right? So how would you then encourage them to like discover a, a side hustle to enrich their life? So I would say like uh, in your free time, uh, what do you find yourself suddenly like doing? Or let's say you go to the bookstore, what do you naturally go and pick up and read? So that would be something that you know that even without any uh, incentive, you would pick that up, you will want to find out more about it. Mm. And then you know that, okay, that is something that you don't mind in your free time. Also, read up more about it, learn more about it, find out more about it. Mm. So then I would say then you roughly find something that you are, uh, passion is a strong word that you're interested in for mm. stuff. Mm. I, I tend to agree. I think also like based on your conversation, where do you tend to light up during a conversation? Mm. Where do you go down that, you know, take people down that path in your conversation? That usually would be an indicator to like where you tend to want to get your energy from and that will sustain you in running your side hustles. Mm, mm, I agree. So it actually comes to, it will attract you naturally. If there's something that you want to learn for the longest time and maybe because of the busy schedule, you have not go for it. Maybe this is the time that you can actually start learning. At what point will you make your side hustle your main hustle? Because now I think even across the board, right? Even all your side hustles are slowly, you know, gaining momentum, gaining momentum you know, making more money, you know, and, and I've talked to multiple people that uh, made their side hustle their main hustle over time as, as there's more momentum in their side hustle. Is there a point in, in your life that maybe your main hustle be, will become your side hustle where it switches position? Or, or could you see yourself or are you working towards that on some level? Maybe you can share. Uh, I would say that I definitely like uh, what I'm doing and the aim for, for example, like our fund, we want to reach a certain, we have some certain targets. Mm. Until you reach a certain like uh, target, which is usually assets under management. So until you reach that, then uh, our job is kind of like not done. Mm. So we want to at least reach there before we even entertain such thoughts, for example. But that's a we. What about you? So you are... Oh, no, no, you, no, no, you, no, you, you buy into that. You buy into uh, that. Yes, idea. yes, yes. Okay, uh, okay. Th- 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 that's, why, that's why I joined. <laughs> I okay. buy into that. So, so, you so, buy into so, that idea. Yeah, so for the rest, for example, like I meet uh, with different clients that actually they have uh, multiple different businesses and all of them are very successful. Obviously, they have to sacrifice something as a go, but they manage to make all like... So why, why is this something that has to go? Maybe your me time, for example, like you have to uh, have less time to watch uh, maybe some shows, some movies or mm. play some games. Maybe you really like to play uh, play games, for example. And then last time, maybe you spend five hours playing games every day. And which is fine. Like you take your rest time and all that. But now, well, you've got to uh, meet this particular deadline or whatnot. Well, too bad. You have no time. You've got to spend this five hours. Maybe uh, come up with a new, let's say, I just think of something, maybe like an editorial mm. uh, for your for your website that you want to uh, have more traffic. Yeah. Sure, you have the flexibility to not do it. Uh, mm. Then it's on you, right? So you're like, oh, why is uh, why is sales not coming in? Too bad mm. you didn't put in that. It's it's on you. Yeah, yeah. I think I think Jeremy from Monks Hill, the Brave Podcast. I don't know if you guys consume his show. Like, he came on the show. And he was saying like, oh, I stopped playing games because I make my life the game. Because it's very powerful a mindset because you can ex- abstract yourself, right? From from this. It's like it's not like, oh, why is it so hard? It's like, okay, I don't want to play this game already, I change another game. Mm, right. Absolutely. So you it gives you that that ability to then take back and be like, okay, this is the game and it doesn't work, let's go somewhere else. Right. So he stopped playing game. I think partly because he got too many things on, on his hands or so la. But but you know, <laughs> you you make it so fun that your real world, your life is the game you play, right? And I thought that was, oh, that's a very interesting perspective. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think for myself, it is always a plan that eventually that when we do leave corporate and then we become the bosses of ourselves, right? You know, what does that look like? That we mean, means you and husband, your husband, husband. Okay. right? So it basically means that, you know, what sort of freedom, what sort of time, what sort of, you know, uh, choices we can make for our lifestyle instead of like selling our time to somebody. 
Mm-hmm. So that has always been the plan. So eventually, we don't want to say reach the retirement age and say that we'll be sitting on the couch twiddling and consuming content, right? Mm-hmm. We want to be in a space where we reach a retirement age and then it is exactly the time where we do everything that we have every planned for. So yes, eventually, the mm-hmm. side hustles will be the main hustle. So, so you don't feel that like you're living the life you want now in that sense? I do feel that I am having the best of everything. I do okay. feel that. Okay. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. Is there a time when there'll be no more Seedly CEO Ming Feng? It will, <laughs> it will be like DJ Feng or something. Or DJ Ming. Yes, DJ Ming. Yeah. Well, I wish. But at least for my side hustle right now, I think the past five years and maybe the next two to three more years will be the best, the golden age, right? For two different side hustles have different longevity. Golden age because... Because of your re- physical revenge spending, no, your physical oh, ability yeah. to be able to say deal with it. For example, soccer I will players. I'll stop you there, that. though. There is a yeah. very famous grandma DJ in Japan. Oh, mm-hmm. I, I know about that. Yeah, yeah. Correct. so you yeah. could be the next one. Yeah, so ultimately, I want to be like that. In not, fact, not, my not so cool, uh, granddaddy, for my <laughs> <laughs> DJ grandpa. teacher in grandpa. Thailand, grandpa Mings in the house, guys. Correct. So I always have yeah. it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I always have a joke that if one day uh, 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 I were to get married and have a daughter, I'm uh, never leaving the nightlife so uh, that I can like follow her to the club so, and make oh sure that God. she be oh. oh. hey, It was a joke, it was a joke. Yeah, I'll be like, yeah, hey, yeah. hey, hey, what are you doing there right yeah, there? Well, you know, well, get your hands off my daughter. Well, well, I do have friends well, well, whose well. father party with their children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that will be that me. Will be that will be you. I'm watching you. Like you're on a party, daddy got guest leader now. That's right. Right. Where's your hand touching? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I think for me, I wouldn't like say that there'll be a time that I will just, of course, ideally, if uh, I'm financially able enough to not have a full-time job and just uh, pursue my passion, I think that'll be a great thing. But right now, I feel that this time when I'm dealing with these two different hustle in a sense, it's definitely the best time like, because I still have the energy and everything to do so. Mm. Yeah, for me, physically. Nice, nice, nice. Interesting, interesting. Cool, cool. Maybe a last question. Like, okay, so for people that are thinking of eventually like making their side hustle a thing, like their main thing or even a big part of their thing, do you have advice for them? I would say start whenever. Don't wait. Mm. Just do it. Nice. Yeah. Good. Love it. Want to make sure that it becomes a full-time thing for you, um, there's a lot more thinking that you need to go through. Yes. You, because now you are your own boss. Yes. And which also means that if you decide to chill for one week, right? Mm-mm. There'll be no income. So I, I think that's I something know. that you need to consider. And if you're ready to take out a commitment, right? And you have calculated the risk and return, go for it. Mm. Do you do you need to talk to your partner? Yeah, definitely. Like it's a big it's a big change in your life, right? If there are all these things like... Yeah, I like, think you brought up a really good point. Mm. Having their support makes a mm. big difference. Yeah. Like, I don't think my husband will have gone in to set up the restaurants without mm. me going, yeah, you have my 100% blessings. Yeah, yeah. Right? Because yeah. it does mean that it is taking some savings yeah. from us. Yeah. And, and it's then, taking up extra time. Yeah. Right? It's like, like no no pato time. Now Now you got a pato at the e-commerce shop. You got a pato in the bar. You know, you got a pato at your restaurant or mm. something, right? It's like, it has to come from some, something has to go. And when you were talking about like something to sacrifice, and I think that, that whole time and relationship element it's a big part, right? I think it's the support. Mm, yeah, mm. like trusting you that you're actually doing something right mm. and not taking too big a risk for the whole family. Mm, so mm. there is all that. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Thank you. Thank you all for coming and sharing your your interesting side hustles. I love it. Thank you for your time. Love Thanks it. for having us. Love it. Love Thank it. you for having love us. It. Yes. Okay, so we asked uh, three rapid fire questions to everybody. Okay, come. Theresa. Uh, so three rapid fire questions. The first is what has been your best and worst investment you've ever made? I think I've made a lot of good investments, like definitely around properties and even starting the restaurant business. I think these are all good investments. Worst investments is actually paying a lot of money to courses to learn how to do trading. Like I still don't get it. I pay a lot for the courses and I lose a lot during the trading itself. So that's the worst. Okay, Ralph. So what is one thing under $100 that has been a game changer? Oh, definitely uh, one of my favorite books. So uh, I uh, there's two. Uh, one is uh, Shrew Dog. The other one is uh, uh, What It Takes. Yeah. Okay, so okay, I'll let you off. Like, okay, how, about, how about I give you one, one, one. Give me the last one, okay? One place you learn that you think is underrated it can be a book, a website, a YouTube, a podcast. Yeah, so I have this 
a uh, little hiding spot where you know like oh my god you're gonna to, reveal to, like, your hiding correct, spot right. so I'm not sure you're no float therapy uh, yep yeah so I, I go for float therapy once Palm a Avenue. month yeah Palm Avenue I think uh, that place is underrated I mean mm. it's it's a really nice place to escape for like one hour or two mm. uh, away from it's all it's a your very phones scary and... escapism did you manage first. to sleep in there? yeah, yeah I, I'm so I was meditating first and then now I'm at a stage where because I do this quite often that I, I can go for float and sleep in there mm. yeah. oh I couldn't the first time you, you have yeah. first time is horrible yeah, yeah the yeah. first time will be the most horrible first yeah horrible. I had salt in my eyes after and I had salt mm. in my ears okay yeah. do, you, do you carry on after that or no I haven't never <laughs> <laughs> okay 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 Palm yeah. Avenue Float Club thank you thank you for your time lovely thanks for sharing oh amazing lovely nice